Okay, so today we have got with us Graeme Longley from Aspire Consultancy um, and also Aspire Assisted, which she'll tell us about later on. But uh, first of all, thank you very much for joining us today, Graeme. Thank you very much for having me, Mark. Good to be here. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. And um, what I usually do with these kind of things is just start by if you could just tell us sort of who you are and sort of what you do uh, sort of for a job, and then we can work work on to sort of yeah how you came into the industry and so on. So yeah, tell us a bit about yourself, Graham. Okay, so I am Graham Longley, and I run uh, Aspire Consultancy, which um, is an assisted technology company based in York. And uh, we, we cover the whole of the UK and very occasionally um, overseas as well. Uh, supply about 100 uh, products. Some of them are unique. Some of them kind of uh, more common to the industry. Uh, we do both both new and we do a lot of specialising refurbished equipment as well. And the other thing we specialise in and do most of is is training for some of the most well-known uh, assistive technology um software products for the visual impairment it's everything we do is for visual impairment and we don't kind of stray outside of that very much really um so that's aspire consultancy and then we have a which as you alluded to we have a, a not-for-profit um arm of the of the business now which uh was really set up to tender for specific projects we've done a lot of project work over the years in terms of training and um a lot of subcontract training as well but um the not-for-profit was really set up to Kind of capture some of the opportunities to tender for for not for profit projects really okay so, excellent excellent how, how many people have you got in your team <laughs> <laughs> well well i don't i don't actually employ anyone um i, I work with other self-employed people who support me uh, yep. so the team is me and my retired guide dog so excellent is, who, give me a shout very, out who's your so retired that, guide, so that, guide dog that, that's wilbur uh, who's not in the office at the moment he's downstairs somewhere um, he very much knows retired, doesn't come into the office anymore. So, <laughs> um, and uh, yes, it really is one man and a dog. Uh, but, but I do, I do have some excellent support. Um, but they, they don't actually, they're not on the payroll. Yeah, so. yeah. No, that's good. That's good. Just me, and really. Then- yeah, no, that's 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 good. And I suppose the, the other sort of question that we always like to ask people um, is sort of how you came into the industry and I guess sort of how Aspire sort of came about. Um, yeah, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Uh, yeah, definitely. So um, I started using uh, assistive tech probably in around about 89 when I was at university. And um, by 96, I'd started using JAWS. Uh, I was in a job working for a bank, which I won't name, um, in, uh, as a graduate management trainee. I, I lasted the first year of the, the management training scheme, Did, didn't like it, and um, kind of came back to, to York, where I've been living for the last my, most of the last 30 years, and uh, kind of plotted my next move, thought, well, um, I think I might be able to teach people. Um, I, I, I thought I could sell things and I was probably what I would call a power user of quite a few of the different types of assistive technology at that point, like JAWS and OpenBook and, and some of the others. So I thought I could help people and make money at the same time. So Aspire Consultancy was, uh, was, was born probably in 98 and it probably took a year to, to actually get up and running and originally initially supported by the Prince's Youth Business Trust. I was just, just young enough to to qualify for that so um i think as i alluded to just before you started recording it kind of all happened by accident really yeah 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 (laughs) and presumably have you been uh sort of visually impaired sort of all your life yeah and it's it's progressively well it it got worse in, in stages so um it was picked up when i was about eight when i was having trouble reading the board i'd always complain that i couldn't see in the dark and people told me to eat more carrots and initially at the age of eight diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa um had a deterioration at 14 where i couldn't read small print anymore and then at 18 19 further deterioration uh, where i couldn't read print at all at which point i was re-diagnosed with uh, bardet beadle syndrome which we only know of 600 people in this country that have got that wow. um and i i've pretty much had the same i'm 53 nearly i've pretty much had the same level of vision now since I was 19 so I'm I'm pretty comfortable in my own skin really so. excellent so you know your way around the software obviously yeah. <laughs> do you hand read day. the keyboard very often uh no not really no <laughs> so there's so my this... keyboard on my iPhone Mark to be honest so yeah 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 I'm with you. 
Mm. Excellent. And I guess this this whole sort of pandemic's maybe been a little bit of a blessing in disguise for you because my best guess is you'd be out on the road and sort of catching trains and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. Whereas, yeah, now you're nice and warm and cozy in your own home. Yeah, that's it. So, so pre pre pandemic, it was literally was ta- you know taxis, trains, and hotels, and it and it it did get to uh, you know to just just before the pandemic hit, it was it was getting a bit silly. Really, it was kind of permanently circumnavigating the country almost. Yeah. Um, and um, I I don't want to go back to doing that level of uh, amount of travelling again. So, um, yeah, I I I actually prefer almost prefer doing everything remotely using Zoom or Teams or or Google Meet or, or whatever. And I think in some respects, it's enabled us to actually get through more work. Uh, yeah. so, so our corporate customers are potentially generating more work. So you kind of, you know, we're all, we're all getting busier almost. And you can, you can be, you can get through more. You can be in three or four places in one day, whereas that would have been three or four days out of the office. So well, it, this it's, is, it's much, this much is, better, really. Yeah, that's, that's kind of what we found. So we're, we're, yeah, our eyes are glued to the screen, as it were. Not that that's a good thing. Um, but yeah, sort of in a day, you know, the other day I was talking to somebody um, up in Scotland, somebody down in Cornwall and somebody, I think, in Manchester, all on the same day. Yep. And like you said, I mean, and the strange thing is we, we cover it quite a bit in these interviews, but it's kind of interesting because this technology, it's not exactly groundbreaking. I mean, it's been around for ages, but I think it's yeah. just a case yeah. of, I don't well know, this is how we've always done things. I, I think yeah. Zoom was a really well-kept secret and, and I have to have to commend for Zoom for the um, the effort that they've, they've obviously made to make it, uh, and other people who have made a, um, you know, made a real effort to make it really accessible. Yeah. Know, both, yeah. Both from the Zoom side and the assistive tech side. Uh, there's, there's pretty much nothing you, you can't do as a severely sight impaired person, including some that breakout rooms, things like that. Team, teams, teams is, is pretty good as well. They're, they're all pretty good, to be honest. The ones, yeah. that, the three that I've used, I've not encountered any any main problems. So the three, what I would call new ones, leave, they leave Skype, leave Skype for business in, in the shade, really. Yeah, yeah, well, that's, that's the thing. It's kind of, I guess you would have seen it uh, and sort of noticed it more and more over the past few years, but... I think it's one of those things. I know there's a lot of um, sort of activity in the industry going on on Clubhouse, uh, the app. Yeah. And I know that, yeah, originally that wasn't very accessible, but they were really quick to kind of make that change. I don't know whether it's fully yeah. accessible now, but it's certainly um, it's much not better than bad. What. From what I hear, I've not, I've not actually tried it yet. From what I've heard, there's there's kind of one developer um, who is at Clubhouse who is very keen on making it as accessible as, as possible. I've not used it. I know Freedom Scientific are using it for some of their lives. Um, I've not actually been involved in it yet. But yeah, there's certainly, you know, half the battle is that they're actually willing to to, to listen to um, to the end users and actually, you know, make at least try and make the adjustments. And then if they don't yeah. do the first time, then they try again. And, and yeah, that, you know, it, those kind of things, they go a long way, to be honest. I think it's a big deal because I know there was something in the news a few weeks ago, or it might have been months ago now, where they were talking about, I think, the uh, uh, National Rail website, I think, isn't particularly accessible. I'm sure it was that. There was something mm. anyway. And I was thinking to myself, well, this is crazy because mm. companies, I mean, they, they should have been accessible or something as important as that should have been accessible for the last, like, how many, well, let's yeah. be honest, decades probably. Yeah. Yeah, um, no, I agree. I, I'm not a massive fan of separate websites. Um, you know, back in the early days, you know, um, the supermarkets or one I can think of in particular would, you know, would have a separate website for the visually impaired customers. Um, or even right in the very, very early days, they actually had a separate app that then what we'd now call an app that, that actually connected to um, the, 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 like their website to actually put the order through. Um, so I don't, I'm not a big believer in having two separate websites. It should all be, you know, in, the accessibility should all be integrated into the into the one the one site. So, you know, yes, I can go off and you use traintimes.org.uk, which is a dedicated website for, for, for visually impaired people. But really, as you say, the National Rail site should be accessible, you know, from, from the beginning, really. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I think that's the thing. Again, something that comes up a lot is sort of the uh, sort of technological advances in uh, sort of hardware, sort of assistive technology over the past mm-hmm. sort of decade or so or more. Um, and it's kind of strange that you would think that uh, websites and software and so on would be that much more accessible um, than they are at the moment. I mean, uh, 
the, the thing that always crosses my mind, in fact, you might have an opinion on this, but when we go into, I'm a, a regular visitor of McDonald's. <laughs> so when you're using things like their kiosks and so on, are they accessible? Are they kind of easy enough to use or not really? No, I mean, no. I haven't tried. Um, the app's pretty good now. The, the, the first incarnation of their app was was not very accessible. I took an iPhone app now that wasn't very accessible. The, the latest one is is pretty good. And I suppose you would, the, the, the adjustment would be that you could order through that and then just go in and pick it up. But I believe the, there is no, um, um, you know, speech access or screen reading access to the to the kiosks or the terminal, whatever you want to call them. So again, just going back to, to, to National Rail for a second, the train line app on, on the iPhone is, is pretty accessible. So sometimes, you know, if you can't do it with one tool, you, you use a different tool. So if if in the Windows environment, a website's not accessible, then it might be on your, on your smartphone or your tablet or you know, on, on its own individual app or whatever. So sometimes, very often, in fact, you, you need more than one tool to, to, to do a job with. So it might yeah, be screen readers even, NVDA might might read something better than JAWS does or Supernova yeah. does, probably, you know, so. I think that's the case with with a lot of things, to be honest, because even like this um, uh, web uh, video web chat thing that we're using, mm -hmm. uh, like Zoom, I find it. I'm using now my iPad. I find it a lot easier to use it on the iPad than I do on the computer. Um, and I don't know. I mean, that could just be down to me just being a bit technologically in, inept or whatever it is. <laughs> sure, but... that's not true. But <laughs> I, I find it quicker to use it on the PC. Yeah, right. And that's yeah, because yeah. I've probably done two or three hundred calls on the PC and very few on the phone. Yes, yeah, absolutely. There's nothing wrong with accessibility on on Zoom Teams or or, or Meet on the phone. It's possibly possibly a bit more takes a bit longer. It's a bit more long winded to get to the particular button you want or the particular yeah. feature. It might not be. You might not. Might you know every feature that's in the Windows version might not be in the in the app version on the iPhone or on the Android version or whatever. So. Yeah, absolutely. Then that was the thing. That was the eye opener for me with Zoom in particular. There was things that I could do on my iPad that I couldn't do on my Mac mm -hmm. or vice versa. And it's kind of you, you sort of think, well, surely it's uh, well, it obviously isn't. But you'd imagine it's they, that they should have some sort of web API that it would just be the same across the board. <laughs> yeah, but, you would think yeah. so, wouldn't you? Yeah, not <laughs> obviously not, not. Not always the case. No, it does. It does vary. It really does. So. so just changing the subject completely, going back to yeah. um, Aspire. So what sort of customers are you dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis? So as in, would could an end user, as an example, contact you and say, I'm struggling with um, this particular accessibility software, and then you could walk them through and, and sort of show them how to use it and basically become a, a power user, that kind of thing? Yeah, so I, I think um, the customers kind of fall into a few different categories. So yes, we do end user training. Um, and we offer a, a, a package, particular package for that. So that could be over the phone. It could be over um, a video conferencing platform. Um, so we do, we do um, you know, kind of reduce rate, reduce training rate for, for end users to buy a, a package of, of, of training to, to enable them to, to achieve that. Um, we also work with um, some fairly big um, training companies. So a lot of our training is subcontract for um, some of the, some of the pan disability training companies in this country, so co almost corporate customers, if you like. Yeah. Yep. And then um, of recent, with Aspire Assistive, uh, we've been working on a you know, major training project for one of the, the sight loss, the, the big the biggest sight loss charities in the country. So delivering telephone and Zoom training for them uh, to teach some of their um, service users to use Synaptic. So uh, it's it's really a right old mixture across. Uh, across the two aspires really or it's starting to be that's the same yeah. project we've run or we've been involved with with aspire assisted because the first one was actually our own and the right, second yeah. one was, was for uh, was for galloway so excellent excellent so you're keeping yourself busy because i think that's yeah it's always extremely. the thing that's the spice in this industry is ace because like you said at the beginning of this, you can help people and you can make money. Um, but also, yeah, nobody wants to be stuck in some sort of boring, monotonous kind of job. And I think that's the thing quite often because people's uh, visual acuity and needs, are, they're so different like, all definitely, the time. Definitely. We, yeah, it kind of, yeah, it keeps everything going. So no, that's great. Yeah, that's what great. I was going to say on the back of that was, um, you know, yes, you might be training on the same software a lot of the time. So you know, Fusion or JSA or whatever, but no two jobs are the same. No yeah. two jobs are the same. And very often, you know, 
no two training you know, when we used to go out on site a lot no 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 two places are the same even to be honest yeah yeah yeah, yeah. keeps keep the, keeps the, you on your feet the quality of the coffee is very variable for a start no, I'm joking. <laughs> but, <laughs> well this is the thing you see right well, now you're at home i have to make my make, own <laughs> yeah you can make your own it's all consistent exactly it's all consistent. right yeah so it's, <laughs> it's it is yeah a lot of it a lot of it's the same and a lot of it's different yes yeah Paradox, i must admit this is the thing again i know it's a uh, we'd had a conversation before we um hit record about sort of working yep. from home and for me it's yeah i mean I, obviously i like being out on the road but i'm mm -hmm. a lot more productive when i'm at home and for me it's kind of it, it's really been a bit of a benefit in a way and i think also for yeah. a lot of our customers as well because it means that yeah people can get the support remotely whereas and like we said at the start you know the, we've always had this technology but there's maybe been mm -hmm. some sort of resistance to it um, and yeah. I think it's really kind of driven that home because more and more people are using their computers. Um, and I guess, again, from your side of things, it's probably a good thing because if people are using um, yeah, software at work and now they need to be able to use it at home, there might be differences mm -hmm. between yeah, the computers or whatever. So they need some training in that sense. So yeah, yeah no, de definitely. It does make you more productive because you're not like, you know, spending hours and hours on trains and stations and in premier ends and you, you can be, you can be, a little bit productive take your laptop to your premier in with you or on the train or whatever but it's, it's not for me i'm more productive doing it remotely definitely it's crazy when you think what we we all used to do like mm -hmm. catch train for hours or drive for hours yeah. and it's just i mean it seems archaic now <laughs> you know i mean and we you know I'm, I'm based in york but we've we've delivered training in as far south as truro and not recently exeter we've done quite a bit in exeter recently in the last two or three years um and right up as far as um well i've been almost to the Mollican tire actually and i've been up to between wow. aberdeen and inverness on the other side so again it could be could be three days out of the office for one yeah session. yeah and that's ignoring crazy. all the costs involved <laughs> yeah exactly right yeah so yeah crazy Excellent. Really, when you think about it so yeah and i don't, I'm guess I don't think it's going to go back no I hope no. I hope in, a, in one sense and I don't think it will ever go back to the way it was before I think there'll be a mixture now of a remote and, and, and in person and I was talking to a customer earlier who um, absolutely definitely wants at least the first part of her training in person in London mm -hmm. uh, and I think going forward everybody I think we will need to give everybody the choice and I think it's yes. only we give everybody the choice yeah absolutely I, I think that's like like we keep saying i think that's the thing if you've got the option because it could be for other reasons that somebody might not want to have somebody physically next to them uh showing them something so in that in that instance so having the distance is is yeah it's only a good thing so yeah no that's great yeah, that's agree, great yeah. and you mentioned at the start of this wilbur's now retired he uh is, yeah. I, I guess he's loving his life are, are you look <laughs> are you uh well, I, I don't know. Would you need um, a guide dog if things were to continue as they were? Are you kind of, yeah? Do do you need to get another a replacement guide dog? Or I had this conversation with my trainer, and you know, I wasn't. I was kind of ninety percent sure, and I probably am still ninety to ninety five percent sure. Uh, as he said to me, you know, your local routes haven't changed. Um, yeah. Uh, you, you know, yes, you, you know, I don't think the guide dogs were really meant to do as much traveling as Wilbur was doing anyway, but he loved it. Thankfully. Yeah. But I think, um, you know, my, my local, the local workload is, is probably going to be the same with an unknown amount of travel. So, so yeah, I've still very much got my name down. I'm still very much waiting for a new one. Um, and, and the only kind of downside at the moment is not being able to go out necessarily when I want, because I'm waiting for something. Yeah refresh your cane training so it's there's only once so far have i had to wait to go somewhere for somebody to actually right. take me whereas before i just would have put the harness on and gone yeah yeah so that, yeah so that's that's the it's the freedom it's the independent side of it really so yeah i am you know uh, all things being equal i'm de i'm definitely getting another one nice and so and i guess there's probably no plans to get rid of the car either because <laughs> no. you might need that <laughs> <laughs> i think yeah ev every as I said kind of earlier, I think, you know, every every possible tool really, car, yeah. support work, yeah. dog, you know, yeah. remote training, you know, yeah. and just just oh, there's you know, you just do you have as many tools in your in your arsenal as possible, really. Even if yeah. it's even if it is training over the phone, which, you know, however long ago it was that uh, Alexander Graham Bell invented it, you know, <laughs> a couple a few hundred years ago now. 
it's, it's well, this is the still, thing. It still works, you know. Still I, does I had a com- exactly. That's the thing. I had a conversation with my son, who's yeah, he's only in primary school, only just. And, oh, right. um, he was. He's got this obsession with playing with tools in the garden, and he was uh, bashing in. He was trying to put a nail into a, a piece of wood, and he was just using. Uh, a spanner that he'd found and I was trying to explain to him I thought he's probably a bit too young to be explained that not everything is a hammer kind of thing and having a hammer is probably a better idea but uh, yeah. yeah. I've always described the computer as a, as a tool to do a job with and I'm sure I probably nicked that from somewhere else but you know it, it's just in that respect it's just like a hammer really you know yeah. it's not a big scary monster it's it's a it's a tool to to, to do a job with whether it's writing a report or you know doing your email or whatever it is it's it's just you know the kind of technical equivalent of a of a hammer or a, a spanner or something that is i've always i've always kind of described it like that anyway so well this is the thing and nowadays because every i mean it, people were bounding this around years ago i always remember people saying oh we're so dependent on the internet i was thinking mm-hmm. well i'm not really but now yeah i 100 mm-hmm. am i mean literally everything it's so I, I had a conversation with a colleague recently about sort of the internet and i think it's probably kind of as important as other utilities so if somebody was turning your water off or whatever you yeah you could probably make do but somebody turns your internet off it's like wow that's uh yeah (laughs) plunging you into darkness you you think your life's gonna end i might i might i might have to consider what app i'd use to find a standpipe in the middle of the street if i turn the water (laughs) off but (laughs) <laughs> this is space might do it i guess no, I don't know. Excellent. <laughs> excellent well thank you very very much for your time i really well, appreciate yeah. it thank you for um, me. and hey no problem at all and i'm sure we will be chatting again soon i certainly hope so thanks mark you, you take care cheers man and you. thanks a lot bye bye